Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of all of us assembled here, we would like to welcome all who are visiting with us and to all who are new to our parish family, welcome. If you've not already done so, we ask that all cell phones and any other electronic devices please be silenced at this time. Deacon Andy will be assisting Father Jim, who will lead us in the celebration of the Eucharist. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From the Christ who was, who is, and who is to come, grace, light, and peace be with you all. And with your spirit. Friends, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in glory, let us pray, let us pray that God will make us witnesses of Christ the light of love who has taken on our humanity to bring salvation to all. Let us pray. Lord God, you gather all peoples and nations to be one in your kingdom of light and peace. We celebrate Jesus' victory over sin and death. We look forward to his return when we will share the vision of your glory. Bless your people who use this wreath as the evergreen sign of your faithful love. Dispel the darkness of sin. May the light and joy of Jesus shine in this, our waiting world. And we pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And in devout and joyful expectation, we call out to the Christ who is our salvation. Lower, please.
Please join in singing our gathering song, number 274, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses 1 through 4 of 274. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw 
concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above the hills. All nations shall stream towards it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways, and we may walk in his path. For from Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and impose terms on many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you know the time. It is the hour now for you to awake from sleep, for our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is advanced, the day is at hand. Let us then throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as in the day, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in promiscuity and lust, not in rivalry and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the desires of the flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's hard to believe that Christmas is only four weeks away. I think time has to move faster and faster as we go through life. Today is the beginning of Advent, and Advent is a very important time in our church calendar. Three readings from Scripture, which we just heard, gave us some insights into the need for a time like Advent and how we must make use of it to celebrate Jesus' birth and to deepen our relationship with him. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament. That was almost 600 years before Christ's birth. The Jewish nation, which was named Judah, was the last remaining part of the promised land, promised by God to Abraham. 
and then to Moses. For years, the prophets inspired by God had warned the people of Judea to mend their selfish ways, to strengthen their country, and to avoid becoming vulnerable to such an attack. Isaiah, who was a very young at the time, warned them to defend themselves. They ignored it. The Babylonians attacked Judea and they destroyed the magnificent temple and all the edifices that had been built by the Jewish nation there. They reduced the country's families. Then they marched the residents back 1,500 miles over hot desert sands to Babylon, which is the modern-day Iraq, and reduced them to a life of slavery. It looked like the Jewish nation might be gone for good. Those Jews who survived were decimated. They were uh, many at the end of their faith. And the future of the Jewish nation, the future of the Jewish people, became uh, very doubtful. Would the Jewish people, faith become extinct? Well, 40 or 50 years later, another empire, Persia, invaded and defeated Babylon. The prophet Isaiah, who at that time was an old man, went through Babylon and urged the Jewish population to trudge back, go back and rebuild your fallen nation. This time the Judeans listened to Isaiah. They rose to the occasion, they returned and eventually established their nation and slowly rebuilt it into one of the most beautiful locations in the ancient world. By doing so, they rebuilt Bethlehem, where Jesus would be born, and Jerusalem, the beautiful temple that Solomon had erected and had been destroyed. So the Jews, Jerusalem and the surrounding uh, suburbs were the place where Jesus and his disciples spent most of of their final uh, few months of ministry. The second of the three readings was the reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Paul wrote it about the time when the tyrant Nero ruled the Roman, the Roman Empire. The Christians were being targeted for persecution. We hear stories about them being stoned, about being fed to lions in the Colosseum. This question of the church could easily have been wiped out. Paul proclaimed, Now is the time for you to awaken from your sleep. He warned them to stay clean and sober, to fight, uh, to keep the infant faith alive. Only if they stood up and were willing to sacrifice their lives to Christianity. The infant faith did survive and was nourished by the blood of martyrs. In the third reading in St. Uh, Matthew's Gospel, Jesus is walking with his disciples in the courtyard of the big temple in Jerusalem. It was only a few weeks away from the time that Jesus would be crucified. And for the way that uh, the apostles were talking, it sounded like there was something something ominous to me here. They began to ask Jesus probing questions. They asked Jesus when the Son of Man was coming. That was another way of asking him when they would die and when the final judgment would come. He tells them he can't answer that question. He tells them not to make the same people made at the time of Noah. They ignored what was going on right in front of them and uh, resorted sometimes to temporary material pleasures to distract them from the real challenges of life. The flood carried them away because they weren't paying attention. So Jesus said, stay away. Don't expect to know when the final hour, hour is coming. That is not yours to know. 
Pay attention to the important things in life. Don't let yourself get distracted by deceptive remedies that make you uh, temporarily feel relieved, but in the end, make you feel empty. Jesus came to earth at Christmas time to teach us by his words. But more importantly, he came to teach us by the way he behaved, by the way he lived his life. His ways are not the ways of the world. He invites us to follow him. He invites us to be better people. He invites us to find his image and likeness in other people, in the emaciated body of a homeless person who asks for a meal, in the cries of an infant who has lost his mother and is crying in the night and asks for comfort. And in a woman who has been subjected to brutal domestic violence, try to find him and make him peace, or trying to make peace between warring sections in society. Advent may be overlooked sometimes, but it's an important time spiritually. Jesus is the centerpiece of our sacramental life. And not only in our Eucharist, but in our whole sacramental system, we need Jesus. And we also need him other times. We need him in the places where we least expect to find him. So, listen to the warnings of the scripture. Don't get lost along the way. Don't waver. Don't be afraid to sacrifice whatever sacrifice all those asked of you. Commit yourself totally, and most importantly, fall on your face. Get up again. So we profess our faith. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. Father Almighty. And there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the community of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As the day of the Lord draws near, be awake, be alert, be watchful in prayer. As we enter into this new season of Advent, let us make our needs now known to our God. May all members of the church give witness to our vigilance in waiting for the Lord by faithfully serving Him in the way that He will the us, where He may always be found. Pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May civil authorities lead their people so that the cities and nations of the world will be safe and peaceful for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May those burdened by daily demands of time discover the freedom and fullness of the Lord. And God's time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May all of us here travel our God's presence, all we do, we 
pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May all our faithfully departed found blameless before God at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May God grant these which we hold in our hearts. Lord, hear our prayer. God of salvation, you desire that all people come to the fullness of life. Hear our prayers that we might be fully awake and prepared for the coming of your Son. We ask this for the same, Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory song is number 282, The King Shall Come When Morning Dawns, number 282.
Friends, please pray that our sacrifice this morning be acceptable to God, who is almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, Lord, these offerings we make gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly <coughs> here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago. He has opened for us the way to our eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so now with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with the hosts and powers of heaven, we joyfully sing with them the hymn of your glory. to be glorified who love our human family and who always walk with us on our journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love and one as once for his disciples, now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Lord God, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread. He broke the bread, blessed it, and gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave you thanks, and giving the chalice to his beloved disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of God. Great is the mystery of our faith. your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, 
and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ entrusted to us, and grant that by the power of your spirit of love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, whose body and blood we have communion. So having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, with the clergy and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope. May we strive to bring joy and trust into this world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place to live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, through apostles and martyrs, with St. Rose, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As we pray now for the coming of God's kingdom, as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus, your Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Advent we await, who will come with glory on the day of judgment. Blessed are all who are called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 279, O Come Divine Messiah, number 279. Oh, come divine my soul. 
act of spiritual communion for our brothers and sisters who are praying with us from home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. May these mysteries, Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to what endures. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we have an infomercial. Good morning, everybody. I know you will hear in the announcement that we have our Christmas concert next Sunday right here uh, on the stage at uh, December 4th, 4 p.m. And uh, I want to make sure that you really hear the announcement. That's why I'm here, to invite all of you personally to come to our 27th Christmas concert. And I know some of you never came to any of them. Okay, I would like to challenge you to make this the first year that you come to the Christmas concert. And I promise that you will enjoy it. We will have nine brass players with us, four trumpet players, three trombone players, a French horn player and a tuba player, three percussion players, two keyboard players, myself, and seven choirs. And a partridge in the pear tree. <laughs> <laughs> that too. We'll have that too. This is the first time, actually, you can hear all seven choirs of the parish. The adult choir, the adult handbag choir, the children's choir, the junior handbag choir, the Spanish adult choir, the Spanish children's choir, and the contemporary group. And this will be a display what you don't have every day. So I know the Giants are doing great this year. I cannot, cannot pull that joke anymore that, you know, don't worry about the Giants. But you can trade once, you know, you can come here. I think they're playing earlier anyway. It doesn't matter. So next Sunday, I hope you will put this on your calendar. And I will see all of you here at 4 p.m. Uh, to see all the choirs and enjoy some great music. And you know the best part? That it's free. You don't have to do anything. You just come in, you sit down, and enjoy some great music. Okay? Hope to see you next Sunday. Thanks. The additional announcements we have for the week. The Knights of Columbus will be selling various Keep Christ in Christmas items after all the Masses this weekend. Next weekend, the Knights of Columbus will be selling Christmas trees, wreaths, and grave blankets at their Council Hall. On Sunday, December 4th, everyone is invited to have breakfast with Santa from 8 a.m. to 12 noon at the Knights of Columbus Hall. Come eat breakfast, meet Santa, who will give a small gift to each child. Next Sunday, December 4th, the St. Rose of Lima Choirs will hold their annual Christmas concert. More information on all of the announcements can be found in today's bulletin. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Friends, may the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of His only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. May Almighty God bless you, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
Amen. Go forth in peace to prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Enjoy your weekend. Our sending song is number 274, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses 5 through 7 of 274.